David Lean famously said, my distinguishing talent is the ability to put people under the microscope, to go one or two layers further below the surface than other directors. For me, good cinema is about a laser-like focus, burning through to the very core of an issue, digging deeper than anyone has ever dared to dig before. I'm Martina Minnow, and today I am joined by a director whose microscopic intensity is quite something to behold. I am, of course, joined by Tabitha Flutterby, director of James and the Giant King's Speech. Welcome, Tabitha. Hello, yeah, you can just call me Tabby, that's completely fine, oh, I feel like we're friends at this point. Tabby, <laughs> I've wanted to be your friend for quite some time, I'm quite delighted. <laughs> Not a problem at all, I've, um, I've got your letters, your emails, your texts, your be bebos, who would have thought that, yeah. Uh, well, I'm persistent, if nothing else, Tabby. <laughs> Uh, so, Tavi, my friend Tavi, um, tell us a little bit about James and the Giant King's speech. Where was the inspiration for that? Well, as a child, I played a lot with fruit. You wouldn't believe it now, um, but I didn't have many friends. Yeah. And when life gives you lemons, make friends. That's what I say. <laughs> um, so just around me, um, a very healthy family, very outdoorsy. I grew up on a farm. I didn't have many friends. Uh, the way I communicated with um, the fruit was telepathically. <gasps> so when I got to the point of being shipped to boarding school at five and a half, a little bit earlier, but the parents just really wanted me out. Um, I found it quite difficult to communicate because I actually hadn't been speaking. I think some doctors threw a word around the word like feral and things like that. I'm not quite sure about the ins and outs of it. So I struggled. I struggled. Was I the king of my castle? Yes. Could I express that vocally? No. And then there we go. James the Giant's King's speech was born. Oh, Tabby, and I can't believe you didn't have very many friends. I'm delighted to be your friend, and I hope it will continue for many years to come. Um, and I always appreciate cinema that is rooted in trauma. It's the most fascinating kind, and you're very brave to share with us today. Not a problem at all. What I say with art is, why go to therapy when you can just make art? That's what I say. Absolutely. Monetize that distress. Wonderful, wonderful. And it was a very moving film. Talk us through a little bit about that opening sequence. Where did the inspiration for that come from? Oh, OK, yeah. So um, a lot of CGI. Um, and a very, very moving scene um, set in the supermarket, Greenways. Mm. Um, and you just see when each of those pieces of fruit were ripped away from what they thought were their families, what they thought was their whole lives. Um, it was kind of had a, I know I was inspired by Homeward Bound because the fruit, obviously, you could understand it had a great travel to get to Greenways, this, um, the supermarket, the store. And then it's thought, I'm here now. I'm with my people. I'm with my cho chosen family. Obviously, some very like LGBTQI plus um, themes in there with chosen family. And then each of those pieces of fruit were ripped away. Um, and they were taken to what they didn't know then, but obviously we knew after seeing the film James's um, house. So a very, if I don't say myself, um, well, I'm going to say myself, a very moving scene. It was, Tabby. And I, I'm not ashamed to say that I can't look at a melon without crying anymore. You've really yeah. changed. You've changed how I feel about fruit. Let's cut to that scene in Greenways. Oh, co Colin, Colin, just please put the fruit down. It's all I'm saying. Just leave it there. Leave it at rest. Leave it in the green, green baskets of green waste. It's all I'm asking for. Put the fruit down? Why would I put the fruit down when I intend to eat it for sustenance? Colin, no, you can't. You're going to eat it. It's there as a display. It should be monumental. It should be... Fruit's part of all of our lives and you're gonna take it and eat it? Oh, oh, that, that melon has traveled so far and come on such a journey. And you're just gonna open it with a melon knife and gorge it down? That's right, I will do anything for the contents of this melon. Yeah, and I've come all the way from Barbados. Please don't eat me, I'm here with all my friends. Lettuce, green onions, beans, Tomato and quits. That's right, it's LGBTQ. L listen to the fruit, please, Colin. C 
Colin, please. Fruit do not have feelings. That's why I, Colin the vegan, will eat them all. Now, Tabby, it's controversial, but I've never seen a vegan as a villain before, and it's made me really feel differently towards them. What I like to do with my work is just to understand that um, as people, we're fully faceted. Um, people are not monoliths. So the fact that um, you're a vegan doesn't necessarily make you a good person. It doesn't make you a bad person, but I wanted to, to people to just view things a little bit different. Absolutely, and you've changed my perspective on everything. I had my first quince the other day, and well, it was quite the experience. <laughs> yep, first comes the quince, then comes the kumquat. So. Oh my. <laughs> Um, and, and so, Tabby, obviously, it was a huge undertaking. You mentioned mm. the CGI, but the prop work in particular, how did you find working with set designer Frank the Plank, and how did that come together for you? Um, I'll be honest, it was difficult. Um, Frank the Plank is famously amazing. He's a visionary. But when it comes with being a visionary, there's obviously... Uh, things that come with that. We did have um, a small relationship. I say a small relationship. He did father three of my children, <gasps> um, triplets. And there wasn't three different children. I don't usually mix business with pleasure, but it happens. When love comes knocking on your door, you open it, tell them to wipe their feet on the mat and let them come in. That's what I say. So it was difficult. Being a working mother and a badass bitch is, is difficult, but I, I managed to um, balance it out. And I understand that to be independent does not mean I don't need support from anyone else. So Frank the Plank, we are no longer together anymore, but that's a relationship with us, not with the, um, the triplets. But yeah, he changed my view on what I thought was a prop. Obviously, I saw fruit and veg as so much more, but... To every object I've seen now, it just literally comes alive. The things he has done with a padded hanger um, is things that I didn't even know could exist. Well, well, well. Triplets with Frank the Plank. I had no idea what a scoop this is for our podcast. And, well, I agree with you. You are a working mother, but you are a badass bitch. So... Obviously, the motif of finding one's voice, I see clearly now that that comes from your own journey. There was a very interesting scene where James is trying to express himself, trying to convey the importance of his message to the fruit, and he just can't find his words. Now, was that autobiographical, Tabby? Yes, it was. James identifies as male, but he's, he's everyone. Um, and we obviously see the transition um, of him transcending um, gender throughout the film. But yeah, that, that was pretty much word from spaced out word of my experience um, uh, as a, a five and a half year old child when I first rocked up at um, boarding school. Um, empty case, parents didn't even send the case, the nanny just put me off. Um, yeah, it was it was difficult. It was difficult. And having that moment with the fruit before I left. Yeah, I think. Sorry, I should get used to this. I've had so many interviews, but yeah, just run the clip. We'll run the clip now. Thank you. I, 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 I just, I just want a strawberry, okay? I, it's, it, 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 it's, 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 it, it's all I want. It's just, just a, a f f fruit salad. It's, I, I, the, 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 that one, that one, sir. P p p p p please. James, in boarding school, there's no such thing as fruit salad. You have to conform. You can only have one fruit at a time. Or this terrible caramel flavoured yoghurt is dessert, which nobody likes and no one knows where they purchased them from. No, 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 I can't, I can't, I couldn't. The, 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 the fruit, 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 fruit salad, it belongs together. All the parts all fit into one. It's one. James, I'm the insides of a lemon. Flavour doesn't exist at boarding school. You should know that. You have to conform. Don't let anyone know who you are. They'll see that and see it as weakness. Did, did anyone hear this? Zest, Zest talking. No, it's just me. Shut up, James! You screaming little turd. Oh, oh. Oh, Ta 
Abby, I can see you're very moved, and so am I. What are your reflections on watching that and that very damning message? You'll have to conform. Yeah, yeah, it's just so it's so difficult for me because it's just so raw and real to um kind of just have to relive it over and over again. That was actually the first time the fruit actually spoke back. Um, so that's when I truly knew that I was the the uh, the doctor Doolittle of um, fruit. And the idea of the fact that I needed to conform is something that I feel like was echoed from everything around me up until all of those five and a half years of my life. And I felt like the icing on the cake was being sent to um, boarding school with nothing. So I had to wear the boarding school uniform. Sometimes people thought I was a small professor um, because I didn't have my own, my own clothes. That, and the creme creme caramel was also it was my mountain to climb the 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 mystery of this wobbly brown dessert was yeah it was my mountain but it was also me I was a small brown wobbly child as well haven't we all been a small wobbly child yeah um there is a really wonderful relationship in this film between James and the dinner lady Brenda mm. um and, and I just love that scene in the canteen where, where he and Brenda bond over the different foods and flavours and spices of life. Uh, it was very heartwarming, actually. Yes, um, Brenda, not, her, not their real name, but um, I won't disclose that. Um, Brenda was pretty much my first human friend. Um, uh, I, I worked a lot with consultants on this film. Um, obviously, being a child, I'm not sure was it an appropriate relationship or not. Um, consultants with social services, a completely appropriate relationship. And obviously you see that within the film. So there's nothing um, funny about that. But me and the character of Brenda almost became a mother figure to me. Um, and an auntie and a friend. We actually did break into song and rap. That actually happened. Uh, and I'm delighted. Every time we hear a little bit of rap and a little bit of song, I'm delighted. So we will cut to that now. There's a wonderful solo from Brenda, the dinner lady, and some fabulous rapping from, from James. And I can't wait to show you this now. Well, uh, come here, James. I've got to show you the variety of the kitchen. Look. I'm not from the same place as all these other bastards from boarding school. I'm from beyond the wall. So let me just show you the beauty of a kumquat. Hold it in your hand and feel it. Wow. It's like when I'm holding a kumquat or a berry, I, all my problems go away. I'm just in the zone talking to you. It's unbelievable. That's exactly right, James. And here is the spice cup. Cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg too. Ooh, they're spicing up life for you. Put a bit on top of your oats and flavor bursts far and remote. I just see all the color. I just see all the things and everything from turmeric all the way to mint. I feel really excited. I feel really sorry. Oh, I just love the smell of curry. I love everything. The paprika, the salmon, the, the fish thing. It's going and whamming, bamming and clamming and snapping up my nose. Oh, I just can't expose the flavor. The flavor inside. I love it in the morning and I love it at night. Oh, oh, Brenda. Oh, how is it great? Oh, you are my very, very best mate. Life. Ah. Oh, Tabby, Tabby, to quote that wonderful rap, I think maybe you are my very best mate. I, I feel so close to you now that I know your story and, and your roots. And well, it sounds like Brenda or whoever the real life Brenda was, was very transformative for you. Um, definitely. And that's what inspired the spin-off album, um, which I like to do with a lot of my work, um, Straight Out Camberley. Um, just to speak to those people that have found rap, spoken word, um, I like to call it poetry really, just from a different, uh, a different way. So um, uh, the album has actually gone bigger than the film in France. Rousing nations across the world with your poetry. Uh, yeah, it, it's difficult because ever since the, um, the film came out, my life has changed. 
I still feel like that five and a half year old child that couldn't um, verbally communicate, even though they had so much in their heart to share with the world. So the fact that now I have a lot of people around me, it, it's difficult because I want to balance out the people that actually want to connect with me and the people that are just uh, trying to just chase my shine. Oh. <laughs> That's the occupational hazard of being a bad bitch, as um, you know. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, and your shine is quite remarkable. Uh, I, Thank you. I Thank would you. love to Cheers. bask in it all day long. I really would. Now, I, I, I do think the message of the film is a particularly strong one about finding yourself and being proud of yourself. But it was quite a battle for James to, to achieve that. And although Brenda was by, by his side throughout, there was a very strong battle scene towards the end. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, so it was it was difficult because I art, I want my art to imitate life and life to imitate the art. And a lot of producers were saying, should this end here? So much blood, so much violence. And up until then, there was like, this could be you, maybe a PG. And then they saw this and then it was just like, we might have to recertify this. So a lot of things were actually cut out. Um, at one point, maybe I will have a director's car. I'll get some budget together to film what I wanted wholly to film but um I feel like it all being represented in a massive food fight at the end was enough for me that representation was enough for me the fact that we see a different side um of um Colin uh the vegan um uh, the, the the fact that Brenda comes into their own and runs and we actually find out that Brenda are actually the backbone of the um the school that does surprise audiences but who doesn't like a food fight? Um, except for obviously people that uh, in situations where they have limited food and the fact that we're just throwing it around willy-nilly might be difficult. But we put that aside. Absolutely. And sometimes one has to park the moral argument for uh, a visually and mentally invigorating food fight. Um, it mm. left me, Tabby, saying, please, sir, give me some more. I loved it. Let's cut to... I, Colin the Vegan, will throw these pureed intestines at you, James, to prove I am the dominant force of the boarding school, and no one wants you. Ugh. Ah! Ah! Oh! No! No! Brenda! Please! I'm... I'm strongly bleeding out! Can you... can you help me? Help me, Papa, please It's gonna be hard. Here, let me suture up your wound with some long thread from a celery stick. Celery thread? But only the headmistress of celery thread. That's because I, Brenda, am actually... Eaton Harrow, the headmistress of the school. Brenda, you, you were Eaton Harrow all along. And that's that explains why you were so good at talking to me. You understood something about me, maybe, that living different lives is difficult. Not everyone knows this, but I too can speak to the vegetables. <gasps> I was so excited by that. What an ending, my gosh. And it primes us up perfectly, doesn't it, for your sequel? Definitely, definitely. I wanted to go beyond this, because obviously a lot of the uh, themes are in this about uh, not conforming, about code switching, about that um, extended family. So the sequel is going to be a little bit um, adult. It's going to be called uh, Slosh. So what's going to be interesting is that my audience is going to have to come on a journey with me, because some of my audiences have seen it are of a certain age, and they won't be able to see the sequel because it is um an 18 but they'll grow up with it and then later on in life maybe a few years down the line they'll be able to see slosh and uh just as a little taster if you'll pardon the pun i have got a trailer for slosh uh, anyone under the age of 18 turn off now avert your ears children here's the trailer for slosh the year's 1918 and people who like vegetables are coming out. Look, I've got a marrow and I'm not afraid to use it. Oh, what are you going to do with that marrow, you bad boy? I'm going to plant it in my garden. You wouldn't. 
It's 1980, and vegetables are cool. Set to a soundtrack by the Human League, we explore the relationship between vegetables and sex. Don't you want your greens? Don't you want them now? Flush, coming to a cinema near you. pressure cooker i can't wait oh, i'm all aplastered yeah i'm very very excited obviously we're gonna have to uh wait for that sequel but it's worth the wait like all things are and tabby i've been waiting a long time to interview you and it has absolutely been worth the wait thank you so much for coming on now as a badass bitch do you have any final words of wisdom for our listeners <sighs> What I just want to say is we've all got a story to share and sometimes we just don't know how to vocalise it or share it. Believe in yourself, give yourself time and people want to hear what you've got to say. Absolutely. People want to hear what you've got to say and Tabby, I could listen to you all day. Thank you for being my friend. Thank you. The Improvised Movie Director podcast features Sabrina Luisi as Martina Lillo, with resident improvisers Rory Vieira and Ryan J. Murphy, with special thanks to today's guest, Monica Gaga. IMDP is produced and edited by Steve Tanner. Theme music by Matt Brown and Johnny Griffiths. Episode artwork by Marty Sears. Additional music by Stan Babich. <laughs>